127 chess hockey show on the trev it's too sweet anyway talking about my favorite players from nhl teams and i do have i could have went alphabetical order but a lot of them aren't done but there are a lot that are and i'm just picking and choosing now but if you want it, want me to cover your team drop it in the comments if you want to look in the description those are the teams i've already covered today Talking Detroit. Why not? <laughs> There's so many different directions I could have went, and I, you know, I was thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. It's like, no, I'm going to do Detroit. I've done Colorado, I have to do Detroit. So, these are my favorite Red Wings of all time. It's a brief history before I get started. Red Wings are one of the charter original six teams. They've been around a lot longer than you or I, or even maybe even your dad, or even thoughts on this planet. <laughs> they've been around since 1926, and they've gone through three name changes. Initially, they came in as the Detroit Cougars. And that's lasted up until 1930. And then for two seasons, they changed their name to the Detroit Falcons before being known as the familiar Red Wings in 1932. And haven't changed since. 11 Stanley Cups, most amongst any American franchises as of this recording. And a plethora of Hall of Fame players that have come and gone through the Red Wings system, but I'm only focusing on the ones that I remember watching growing up in my adulthood. All that's fun stuff. Because trying to name off players I haven't even seen, except for in YouTube highlights, is not really fair. Because I really don't understand the scope of what they could have meant to me when I didn't see them play. You know what I mean? But anyway, let's get to talking about my favorites that have come and gone through the Detroit system. In net, I went with Mike Vernon. I've always been a fan of Vernon. Always. When he was in Calgary... When he went to San Jose after Detroit, I've always been a fan. And on top of having a Con Smythe to his name in Detroit, he was the first one to fight Patrick Waugh. So my lasting legacy of Mike Vernon is laying it out with Waugh and actually keeping up with him really good. So based on that, yeah, Vernon's my, my guy in Detroit. Starting defense with Nick Lidstrom, because why not? The guy was, oh, the best thing in defense that came around my generation anyway. I mean, for everybody who saw Bobby Orr play, there's no comparison. But Lidstrom, in my mind, probably the closest thing to Bobby Orr that my generation and the generation after me were going to get. And he didn't disappoint. Did not disappoint at all. I mean, he only had, what, five Norris trophies, six Norris trophies to his name? I could be wrong on that, and if I am, please correct me. Sticking on defense, Larry Murphy. I was a fan of his before he came to Detroit. I was a fan of his in Washington. I was a fan of his in Pittsburgh. He only added a great veteran presence to that blue line, and, oh, yeah, it paid dividends. You know what I mean? They only won, what, one, two cups with him? So... How could you not want a guy like Larry Murphy on your blue line? It's a toss-up between who I wanted to cover first and forwards and who I wanted to cover last, because either of these names could go either way, but I went with the captain, Stevie Eisenman. What's not to like about Eisenman? The guy was, in my mind, probably one of the best captains to come along ever. And I've been watching hockey a long time. The guy was all class, and... Being able to help lead Detroit to three cups, not a bad thing at all. You know, I mean, it's a shame he didn't have a Con Smythe to his name because he would have earned it. But great player to watch. And yeah, can't say enough good things about Eisenman. That's a, it's a great thing that he's back with the team now. He can actually build the team how he would build it. And it's a curious thing to see when they develop, when they actually get good, how scary they'll be. I mean, look what he did in Tampa. You know, the results are still showing themselves. Just hoping he can replicate the same kind of magic. Now, if you know me, you should know the next two are not a surprise at all. 
it was just a matter of who to put in, who not to put in. And I was in a toss-up between the Magic Man, Pavel Datsuk, or the Professor, Igor Larionov. And I went with Datsuk. Yeah, Larionov was amazing. Especially when you needed a good pass. Datsuk, with his hands, with his speed, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And the fact that, you know, a lot of people emulate him in the shootout. You know, copy his little one-handed move. That alone tells you you've made it. You know, when you got people trying to imitate you. Because life imitates art. And the guy was an artist. Oof, it's a shame he went back to Russia. And didn't finish out his career in Detroit. But you got you can't, credit the man, you can't discredit the man for wanting to do what's best for Pavel Datsuk. But fun player to watch. Fun player to watch. Yeah, you should see this one coming. Sergei Fedorov. Because why not? Of course, I got a thing for Russian players. That's beside the point. But the guy was, oh, pure amazement and a half. The first Russian to win a heart trophy. First European to win the heart trophy, for that matter. I mean, when he was on the ice, when it was the Russian five, or even when he was playing with anybody else, the things he could do, and he was so multi-dimensional, you could put him on defense, and he'd be okay with that. You put him on the point, and you got your points. You put him down the center, and oh, you got you got a highlight reel. Amazing player to watch. Amazing player to watch. I mean, if you got to see him live, I pity you, or I envy you. Sorry, I don't pity you. I envy you because I would have loved to have seen that guy in the flesh, live, on ice. But getting to see him play when he played was still amazement and a half. So that was my favorite Red Wings of all time. This is episode 127, Chess Hockey Show. I well, thank you for tuning in. Don't think I don't appreciate the gesture. As I said, if you want, to, if you want me to cover your team, put it in the description. Put it in the comments. If you want to see the teams I've already covered, they're in the description down below. But if you like this video, you know what that thumbs up button does. If you want to, that red button, you know what it does. We're going for 100 now, so we got a long way to go. Let's make it happen. Let's see if we can do it in less time. Then we hit the first 50. We hit the first 50 in just over a year and a half. Let's see if we can hit 100 and less. That's my challenge for you guys. Obviously, it's my challenge for me too, so I got pretty snow. But either way, socials are in the description down below. Moving forward. Oh, well, I've got a whole book full still of other things I could talk about. I could talk about another team. I start talking about trophies. I might actually start... Go back to defunct teams because they've been sorely neglected. But either way, in the meantime, in between time, be looking for more years from Trev. Later.